Mm. For me, it's a particularly clean taste. It does finish with a little bit of spice, what we'd find like in a Basque pear or in a cooked apple. So I think it's going to be fun to eat it with this sea urchin. What we're going to do is put the glaze now on the sea urchin. So when we bake, we put the flame on, this is going to enhance a little bit more of the, the spices that we don't usually taste in sea urchin until we heat it. So we're just going to give it a little bit of, of uh, smokiness. And there's going to be flavors again that we don't find when we eat a sea urchin raw. So what's interesting about something like this is that a lot of people don't usually eat the sea urchin uh, warm or glaze like this. Great opportunity for them to appreciate the sea urchin with a different texture and different flavors. We're going to toast the sea urchin a little bit more now. Now we're heating it to give texture, almost a little bit grainy. But we didn't want to do that first because we wanted the smokiness to go inside, but we didn't want to overcook it. Okay. So. This sake can go with so many things. Today we chose the sea urchin because it has a beginning flavor and has a beautiful finish, just like the sake. The sake has an introduction to itself right from the beginning. It tells you a lot of characteristics, but it has a long flavor. So same like for me for sea urchin. Sea urchin has a beginning palate, but then has a journey, and then it has a balloon pop at the end. So both these will ride that long path together. So I find that these have the synergy of the introduction of what their flavor is going to be, the taste buds start to activate, but they have a beautiful finish. Yeah, very soft on your palate. It has almost like a, a bit of age to it, but I don't think it's an aged sake. So that's gonna, that sake is gonna marry again very, very well with kombu and of course the Dungeness crab from Alaska. I think also that the, the chow mushi, the custard of this dish is gonna also work well with the richness of this sake. Same sake. So we're going to put all this crab meat in here. There we go. So we're going to put that much black truffle in. We have beautiful puree. Put that here. So now we're going to put the black truffle on. But I think this sake has also the, the composition where it tastes rich, it tastes deep. This has got the mushrooms, the puree, so it tastes very deep, um, very profound in uh, minerals and the different flavors. Uh, with the dashi again, it's going to have that richness like this sake has, but they're going to both work together. They're going to stay on top of each other, they're going to travel together. So it's not like this, it's more straight like that. So you have two flavors that are going to work across. Sometimes we ride up and down. But this one, they're gonna ride on each other. There's both of these are gonna stay from the beginning to the end. It's very interesting.